world class and made in America. This is the story of the official White House presidential limousines, a component of history while serving the presidents of the United States. These are extraordinary vehicles built to the highest standards and the pride of selected automobile manufacturers. They exemplify the ultimate in automotive engineering excellence, demonstrated in the design, function, and development of America's presidential limousines. Preparations for the president to travel, even within a few blocks of the White House, usually consist of a police escort and lead car, the president's car, and several Secret Service and press vehicles. Prior to the gasoline-powered automobile, this proud, stylish 1902 Brougham was the last horse-drawn vehicle used by an American president. Within a few short years, its status changed from providing transportation for President Theodore Roosevelt to hauling groceries for the White House staff. Completely detached from the comfort of modern-day presidential transportation, Special features on this carriage are the low-slung body for easy entrance and exit, high-gloss paint, and velvet and leather interior. The carriage driver, Daniel Webster, was retired with the Brougham in 1928, making way for the speeding automobile. For more than half a century, the Lincoln has been the dominant official White House car since Franklin Roosevelt rode in his 1939 Lincoln K model. The Lincoln first became the presidential favorite during the 1920s. According to one theory, President Coolidge had a personal regard for Henry Ford and was the first president to request a Lincoln for his official use. Not until 10 administrations later was that prestigious place of honor shared when President Reagan took delivery of a 1983 Cadillac Fleetwood. Dubbed the Sunshine Special by President Roosevelt because he preferred the top down, this new Lincoln was delivered to the White House in December 1939. It was the first official limousine leased to the government by the Ford Motor Company. Built at a then enormous cost of $12,000, the custom Lincoln chassis was constructed by Ford and the aluminum body was designed and built by Brunn in Buffalo, New York. The interior of this impressive Lincoln was rather sparse. The president's compartment had no armrests, ashtrays, or cigar lighter. The interior, designed for maximum seating, was upholstered in brown top grain leather. The rear compartment had two heavy-duty auxiliary seats and a sturdy leather-lined weaponry cabinet. President Roosevelt often addressed his audience from the rear seat, as he did on this occasion in 1942. Running boards were built as wide as possible to accommodate the Secret Service, with chrome handles secured to the windshield pillars. Located just above the trunk are the grab handles the security agents held as they stood on these platforms, as shown here on President Roosevelt's inspection at the Willow Run bomber plant with Henry Ford in 1942. Just above the rear license plate was an illuminated sign which read, Police, do not pass and was switched on during parades to keep police vehicles behind the presidential car. To ensure the president's safety during World War II, 
A remodeling was completed which included armor plating and one inch thick bulletproof glass. The tires now had bullet resistant metal clad inner tubes. The convertible top was reinforced with a wire mesh liner. Two special driver controlled vent doors designed into the cowl directed engine heat to defrost the thick windshield. The car was custom fitted with a 1942 style front end. Weighing almost five tons, it took all 414 cubic inches of the Lincoln V12 to pull the car. Faithfully serving Presidents Roosevelt and Truman for 11 years and over 55,000 miles, the Sunshine Special was transported throughout the world. It was retired in 1950 and is on display in all its original glory at the Henry Ford Museum in Dearborn, Michigan. While the White House was undergoing a four-year reconstruction, President Truman was residing in Blair House across the street on Pennsylvania Avenue when this 1950 Lincoln Cosmopolitan limousine was delivered in June of 1949. This one-of-a-kind convertible was built by Ray Dietrich, a prominent coach builder, and was leased to the government by Ford. The Cosmopolitan is powered by a high-compression 337 cubic inch L-head V8, producing 152 horsepower. Special features include flashing red lights, dual spot lamps mounted on the windshield pillars, and center opening rear doors. Inauguration Day 1953, President Harry Truman rides with President-elect Dwight D. Eisenhower to the Capitol. At President Eisenhower's request, several cosmetic changes were made in 1954, which included this bubble top. The retractable platforms were removed and replaced by a redesigned rear bumper. A Continental spare tire was installed as the trunk space was required to store the bubble top and an air conditioner. Upon his return from Bermuda, President Eisenhower makes his way to the bubble top from Air Force One, which he had named the Columbine Three. This very unique Lincoln weighing over three tons, was rather difficult to maneuver as it didn't have power steering. Occasionally, motorcades congested with huge crowds caused the car to overheat. The heavy Lincoln couldn't get sufficient air through the big radiator, but it never boiled over. After every major trip, scratches and dents were removed and the entire car was repainted. At last count, the body was refinished more than 35 times. This car also wore out several engines, traveling extensively throughout the US and Europe. The odometer now shows just over 105,000 miles, but was reportedly driven twice that distance while in service for 15 years and four administrations. This was also the official parade car used during the eight-year Eisenhower administration. President and Mamie Eisenhower begin a second term in the 1957 inaugural parade. During its tenure, the Cosmopolitan carried many foreign heads of state. Distinguished passengers included this 1957 visit to Washington by Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip. Mexican President Mateos in 1959 and President Charles de Gaulle of France in 1960. On a freezing Friday morning in 1961, a hatless president-elect is accompanied by President Eisenhower for the short trip along Pennsylvania Avenue to the nation's capital for the inaugural ceremonies.
John F. Kennedy takes his first ride as the 35th president, along with his wife Jacqueline, acknowledging the crowds as they ride in the parade back to the White House reviewing stand. Although meticulously maintained by the Ford Motor Company and the White House garage, this car failed to start on one occasion when President Kennedy traveled to Europe in 1963. While the Cosmopolitan was under guard in a police garage in Ireland, the constables ran the six-volt battery down while playing with the electric windows. Its last official showing was on October 31, 1965, when President Johnson used this car while traveling in New York City. In 1967, the retired Cosmopolitan joined the Sunshine Special in the Henry Ford Museum. This magnificent Lincoln was delivered to the White House on Wednesday, June 14, 1961. Built at a cost of $195,000, it was leased by Ford to the Secret Service for a token $500 a year. The timeless styling of the all-new 1961 four-door convertible provided a natural platform from which to work. Ford Motor Company selected a stock Lincoln convertible from the assembly line and shipped it to bodybuilder Hess and Eisenhart in Cincinnati, Ohio, where the Lincoln was converted into a parade limousine. Codenamed the SSX100, the body was lengthened in two places, adding an additional three and a half feet, which increased the weight from just over 5,000 pounds to almost 8,000 pounds. A production 430 V8 engine and transmission were selected as the powertrain, coupled to a heavy rear axle. The Lincoln came equipped with a siren located behind the front bumper and a two-way radio communication system. These retractable platforms created a safety risk and were rarely used. At the request of President Kennedy, the 61 was painted midnight blue. The interior was trimmed in light and dark blue leather with a dark blue carpet in the rear compartment. To comply with protocol, the car was soon repainted a darker shade of blue as all previous presidential limousines were black. A unique six-piece plexiglass bubble top roof was designed to be assembled in several configurations. A vinyl covering was occasionally placed over the bubble top but this full-size removable hardtop was generally used when the Lincoln was transported by air. The spare tire was designed into the rear of the car as the trunk space was essential for storing the bubble top sections and communications equipment, and the rear bumper was hand-built incorporating platforms for agents to ride on. The control panels for the air conditioning system and radio are conveniently located in the rear compartment. The clock and an air conditioning vent are mounted in the back of the front seat. Lap robes with a hand embroidered presidential seal are tucked into special pockets on each door.
Shown with Ethiopian Emperor Haile Selassie, an exuberant president enjoys the occasion as they ride through downtown Washington. The rear seat was hydraulically controlled and could be raised an additional 10 and a half inches, providing greater visibility of the president and state visitors. President Kennedy frequently rode in standard Lincoln convertibles, generally when visiting military bases throughout the United States. A few cosmetic updates were added the following year. A 1962 style Lincoln grille and the distinctive 1957 Lincoln Premier wheel covers replaced the original Continental Mark II style. Rear deck grab handles were also installed at that time. When President Kennedy traveled, the 61 Lincoln and one of the two 56 Cadillac follow-up cars, affectionately codenamed the Queen Mary II, were always shipped together. These cars were usually loaded in a military C-130 cargo plane, which also carried a few spare parts and extra gasoline when traveling abroad. While the President was seen many times riding in this car in Washington, D.C. and throughout the United States, this Lincoln also traveled extensively in Europe. Occasionally, when crowds along parade routes overflowed into the streets, the agents in the front seat would partially open their doors, moving these people away from the car as the motorcade passed by. After every major trip, the presidential car was usually repainted and scratches and dents were repaired. While riding in the 61 Lincoln through the streets of Dallas on Friday, November 22, 1963, several shots were fired as the car proceeded down Elm Street. This was the last occasion a serving president would ride in an open car. The Lincoln was driven from Parkland Hospital in Dallas back to Love Field and loaded in a military cargo plane for the trip back to Washington. The nation was still in mourning when a task force of 30 people were assembled to consider various concepts in presidential transportation. This group was later reduced to six, representing the Secret Service, the Army Materials Research Center, Pittsburgh Plate Glass, and Hessen Eisenhardt. Careful consideration was given to all proposals regarding the presidential vehicle, but the most practical was to rebuild the SSX-100 as there wasn't sufficient time to design and build a completely new limousine for President Johnson. Plans were quickly approved by the White House and the car was returned to Hessen-Eisenhardt on December 12, 1963 
where the rebuild was to be completed. There, the Lincoln was completely gutted. Titanium armor plating was installed throughout the entire rear compartment. The rear brake lines were also wrapped in armor wire. A permanent bubble top roof was installed. To assure adequate rear passenger comfort, a separate air conditioning system was mounted in the luggage compartment necessitated by the increased glass surface. A new hand-built 430 V8 engine was installed with recalibrated transmission. The engine was assembled with selected components. The compression was increased, intake ports in the cylinder heads and manifold were polished, and a high-flow carburetor and premium ignition components were installed. Dynamometer tests run on the new engine confirmed a 17% increase in horsepower over the original engine. A 100 amp alternator was installed to power the additional electrical equipment. Virtually all suspension, steering and braking components were upgraded. The load over the front wheels was almost a ton over the normal production weight, which made the steering very heavy during low speed turns. New wheels and 10-ply tires were installed as the Lincoln now weighed 9,800 pounds. The original front compartment door trim, dash panel and seats were reused after the Lincoln was reassembled. The entire rear compartment was completely retrimmed in blue leather. The adjustable rear seat mechanism was removed because it couldn't be used with the new roof. The thick, bulletproof windshield was rather difficult to defrost with the original front heating system. All the door and roof glass panels were plated, ranging a thickness from 1 to 2 inches. The interior, now virtually soundproof, required several microphones strategically located around the body, allowing the occupants to hear outside the car through the stereo speakers. The Lincoln was returned to the White House in June 1964. For reasons of his own, President Johnson didn't use the car until October, and then only after it was repainted black. Before its retirement in 1977, the 61 Lincoln served five presidents and traveled just over 55,000 miles. Currently on display in the Henry Ford Museum, it is moving to note that on the anniversary of the assassination, a single rose is placed beside this car, and no one knows from whom. Delivered in the fall of 1968 for President Nixon, this new Lincoln limousine was built by Ford and Lehman Peterson of Chicago. The 67 utilized 68 body trim and included a number of features which have never been revealed publicly. First used by Richard Nixon, this stunning black armor-plated Lincoln Continental, designed and built by Ford Motor Company, was unveiled to the press on August 4, 1972 the Dearborn Body Engineering Research Center. It would later serve Presidents Ford, Carter, and Reagan. The serial number designates this Lincoln as a 1970. It required almost three years to develop, was handcrafted by 10 metal workers and two welders, weighs more than 13,000 pounds, and originally employed 1972 body trim. The trunk contains batteries for the vehicle's electrical system and provide storage for the communications equipment. The heavy-duty suspension 
included eight bolt wheels and oversized bulletproof tires. This fold down rear step bumper was one of numerous security features developed for this vehicle. Adequate performance is provided by this 365 horsepower 460 Lincoln engine. Dual heavy-duty alternators generated sufficient power for the complex electrical system. The prestige of the Lincoln is evident in this next candid interview as President Nixon comments on Premier Brezhnev's driving skills when he presented the Russian leader with a new Lincoln town car at Camp David in June of 1973. That was a pretty sporting event. We gave him this time a Lincoln. I got into the seat with him. And the Secret Service were petrified again because they don't let a president drive the car or anybody else drive except one of them. But in any event, uh, we went around a one-lane road, which goes around the perimeter of Camp David, and there's a very steep drive, and I've gone down it in a golf cart, and it, it can be very dicey if the brakes on the golf cart are not particularly up to s uh, speed. But in this case, he went down that hill about 50 miles an hour, and I was just thinking, my God, if one of the Marines comes up that, up that road the other way, uh, we're going to hit him. But fortunately, we didn't. He just... He turned as we went around the corner at the bottom because it makes a hairpin turn to go back up the hill. The car turned, squeaked around there, and the tires screaming, and then we went up the hill, and then finally came to a stop back up. And he, he turned to me and he smiled. He says, this car holds the road very well. And I was just thinking, it takes something sometimes to be a diplomat. While on the campaign trail, this Lincoln provided refuge for President Ford when he was shot at by would-be assassins twice within 17 days in September 1975. These security handholds built into each fender allow the Secret Service to stay in contact with the car while scanning the crowd. Part of the White House fleet included this 78 Cadillac Fleetwood used by President Carter. In 1979, the 1970 Lincoln was updated with new trim. President Reagan and his wife Nancy take the familiar trip along Pennsylvania Avenue in 1981 with the usual security provided by the Secret Service. On March 30, 1981, Ronald Reagan's 70th day in office, six 22 caliber Devastator bullets were fired at the President as he walked toward this Lincoln parked outside the VIP entrance of the downtown Hilton in Washington, D.C. Two bullets hit the Lincoln as he was about to enter through the right rear door. One bullet hit the door glass and the other ricocheted off the rear fender and into the President's chest. There has been speculation that had the rear doors of this Lincoln not been hinged at the rear fender, the injuries to President Reagan may have been fatal.
most recently used by President Reagan, having logged just over 40,000 miles, this is the last presidential limousine that will ever be on display in any museum. All future presidential cars will be destroyed in Secret Service safety experiments. President Reagan used this 1975 Lincoln during a trip to Europe. As the speed of the Lincoln slows, the Secret Service resume contact with the car. Maneuvering this six-ton limousine sometimes appears rather difficult as the president's driver repositions the car. This 1983 Cadillac Fleetwood, presented to the Secret Service in 1984, was first used by Ronald Reagan. President Bush is shown here riding in this car. This specially modified version of the 1989 Lincoln Town Car, built on a modified truck chassis, was designed and developed by Ford Motor Company at their Advanced Vehicle Development Facility in Dearborn, Michigan. It maintains the interior and exterior styling theme of the production Lincoln Town Car, yet incorporates into its design advanced security, communications, and engineering features. The new presidential edition Lincoln is presented to President Reagan and President-elect Bush just outside the Oval Office on January 12, 1989.
Don't you guys have raincoats out in Detroit? Well, uh, oh, sorry. This is not wild weather. Wild weather. <laughs> <laughs> President-elect Bush, enjoy it next Friday. I guess we'll take it on his maiden voyage, so we wish you every success. It's, I guess it's the much. first presidential limousine they tell me that's ever been built from the ground up, so it should be quite good. So Designed particularly for that purpose. Yes, guess it's so truly made. Give that appearance on the outside, huh? You never know. Let's just see. Production 460 cubic inch engine with a C6 automatic transmission and heavy duty rear axle were selected as the powertrain. The wheels and hydraulically assisted power brakes are larger than on a standard Lincoln. In addition to the production Lincoln Town Car instruments, the driver's compartment contains a multifunction message center, a twin two way communication system, a public address system, and separate heating and air conditioning units for both front and rear compartments. President Bush occasionally used this 81 Cadillac Fleetwood. Cadillac Motor Car Division presented this beautiful 1993 Fleetwood to President Clinton on April 21, 1994 
It is the newest limousine in the White House fleet. Under Secret Service supervision, all facets of the design, development, and manufacture of this armored Cadillac Presidential Series limousine were completed totally within General Motors. President Clinton usually begins his day by jogging, and his Fleetwood is always within a few feet at all times. All White House limousines are fitted with flag standards on the front fenders. When the President is riding in the car, the President's standard is flown from the left fender and the United States flag is flown from the right. 